Hey folks, Colin here, thanks for joining us. How to use a dog training collar. Look, the thing you've got to remember when you are using a dog training collar is that dogs have never experienced what comes out of the collar before. So you might get a reaction. There are three things that are going on, folks, maybe four. The position of the collar. Is the collar touching um, a funny bone or a nerve ending and you're going to get a bigger reaction? So um, uh, if, if it's in a position where it's, it's hitting a nerve, then you're going to get a bigger reaction on a different day than if it's in a different position. So, if you stick, I'm not going to push the button on this. I'm not going to push the button. If you stick the collar on a certain area on your, your skin or on your arm and then you move it, you'll get a different feeling because you're hitting different nerve endings. That makes sense, okay? The next thing to remember is if the dog's skin is wet and um, that's going to increase the t t travel of the static stimulation into the skin. The other thing to think about as well is that um, the uh, dogs have dry skin. So if you get this home and you try this on yourself, we have thin, oily skin. Dogs have thicker, dry skin, and they also have um, uh, hair as well. So the reaction you're going to get from the dog is different. Now, the next thing to think about is what is the drive of the dog at the time? What's his motivation? If you remember our barking dog chart, where we went through um, a dog can bark when it needs to if the, oh, someone's calling in already, that's cool. Um, if you've got the, um, the dog ha uh, is barking at pigeons in the trees and then his adrenaline jumps up because someone's jumping the fence and then the collar increases gradually to hit that adrenaline level and it cuts, stops the dog barking, um, then uh, you're, you're kind of getting an idea of how the drive is working. So if your dog's really excited, uh, you might need to increase the levels. And you can be the judge of that. You can't say that, oh, today my dog uh, reacted really nicely on number three, so tomorrow all I'm going to do is use number three. Uh-uh, it doesn't work like that. If your dog sees a rabbit on the other side of the road or he's got a real high dog aggression and he's going to go and run up to another dog, you need to use higher levels. Now, the other thing to remember, once they start to learn what this is all about, and we include a dog training guide in all of our, our products so that you can see... Uh, read a little bit about the techniques and things to think about and we'll give you some advice over the phone as well if, we, if you wish. Um, you can start to think about how you're going to use the remote trainer. If, if you're, you've got a dog that's not coming back to you and he's ignoring you, just, um, just a bit busy, okay, picture a beagle, okay, their, their, their nose turns on and their ears turn off and they're wandering around the park and they're going, la, 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 yep, sure, I'll come back, mum, blah, 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 and, and you're pushed to go home. You don't need a lot to get his attention and distract him to come back to you because he would have been trained over time. You just maybe need to give him a reminder. Initially, when you start using the remote, you might need to turn it up to a level that's slightly above his comfort zone. He's just sniffing around, having a check out of what's going on. You need to go slightly above his comfort zone so that he can um, then uh, get distracted and in the meantime, you're trying to call him back. Now, if you have a situation and there's a few people that might disagree with me at the moment, and that's fine, I don't mind. If you have a situation where your dog is aggressive towards other dogs and wants to run across a busy road, uh, you can't let him off the lead. Uh, he has got a high drive towards chasing kangaroos or rabbits in the bush, then uh, um, have a chat. My idea and my technique is if you pick the uh, worst problem first and you focus only on that problem, and once you've finished working on that problem, you can then move on to the next issue once the dog's trained. A couple of things I'll mention in the minute is something Seth uh, Pywell was um, good at bringing to my attention and explaining it in better detail than I could, is something called collar awareness or being collar shy. But if you have some, a dog that is chasing bicycles, my, um, well, the way I stop my dog running across a busy park um, this was Missy, run across a busy park to go and get aggressive with another dog and beat him up. I let her go and then I turned the collar up to a letter sidestep and wonder what was going on. What I was doing was distracting her because even though I had done some training at home with her and she recognised what the collars did, her instinct and her desires took over and she took off. Now when I pushed the buttons, she was so busy thinking about that other dog that she didn't pay attention to the corrections from the collar. So what I did then was I had to turn it up that really went, no, stop what you're doing and then I was the guy calling her with good recall and giving her a reward to come back. So what, I ha what happened then is I turned the tables on distracting her and I was calling her to come back. I rep represented safety and it was a great success. 
There is a video on our dog training page where we talk to a couple who had a German Shepherd that would pull the lady off her feet and then go and uh, try and beat up another dog and was very aggressive towards that. So uh, she, she hired a remote training collar from us and then she went and upgraded to a better model later on. And the next time we saw her, she came back in with her second dog that she rescued because she had great success. She, she, the dog used to turn around and try and bite her hand and make her let go of the lead so it could beat up another dog. And so this worked really well. Uh, the next thing to think about is collar aware. You don't want to get the collar, put it on the dog and then start training and correcting the dog because he knows the collar's on and you can often get this with bark collars as well, uh, then if the collar's on, I'll behave myself, and the minute you don't put the collar on, we'll, um, then I'll go and do what I like. We'll talk about the solution to that maybe next week, and we'll talk more about using these with aggressive dogs, which in the manuals it says don't use it on an aggressive dog. I agree with that, but there are techniques you can use to stop a dog being aggressive uh, and even have them off the lead within a matter of uh, weeks or months. Now, the, um, the next thing is uh, being... Uh, handpiece aware, if you stick your hand in the pocket and every time you put your hand in your pocket you bring this out and give the dog a correction, as soon as you put your hand in your pocket he's going to duck for cover. Uh, that happens on, in maybe a few farming situations, they look at the dog and push it. So there's a few techniques we have in our uh, thing about how to use them. So when you're using a dog, remote dog training collar on a dog, be consistent, work on one problem at a time, don't overdo it uh, and you're the good guy in the equation. Remember collars? and bark collars were actually improving the relationship between the dog and the owner. Uh, this is the same with remotes. If you use a remote dog training collar correctly, you're gonna improve the relationship and the desire for the dog to be doing the right thing and be rewarded. Right, we're gonna leave that there. If you wanna call us or look at our remote dog training collars, they're on our website. Make sure you get one that's covered by the Australian ACMA and the CTIC, and we're gonna do